Hello and welcome to sunny California. Welcome back to another out of spec reviews video and welcome to the Mazda MX-30. Today's a really interesting one. We're gonna ask a lot of questions. We have, I need to figure this car out. Let's see what it's all about. This is a new battery electric vehicle from Mazda, the first in North America. And today we get to drive it. I genuinely haven't driven it yet. We're gonna take it for our first drive together. Talk about the use case for this car, the pricing, the offering, is it good for our market? Is it not? I don't know, we'll see, but let's go explore everything we can about this quirky little Mazda. This is the Mazda MX-30. And before it goes any farther, this is the battery electric version. Now next year, Mazda will be bringing a range extended hybrid version of this vehicle to the market. And I have a lot to show you about this car. And again, this isn't our full review. It's just, I have a few hours with it to spend some time, but I have to say things are not off to a good start. Let me at least give you my impressions of how this morning went, because I think that's a telling sign for the way this car is going to succeed in our market. This morning, I came over into Southern California. I'm in Irvine, where Mazda's held an event for journalists to come and drive and experience their vehicle. And thankfully, I'm glad I'm one of them. You know, really big, big plus for them to invite me. Thank you. This way I can bring videos to the channel for you guys. However, I have to say, uh, you know, in the press materials itself, when I was reading through the information about the vehicle, it was getting kilowatt and kilowatt hour confirmed. They quoted battery capacity. They didn't state if it was usable or gross. And I think for most car journalists, they don't, I mean, not to knock them, but I, they're not like EV nerdy like you, and, you guys and I are. So I think that's fine. But Honestly, I have to say this morning, I went to a presentation with some of the product experts on the car and I'm like, okay, so what's the power of the onboard charger? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to check materials. Okay. What's the usable capacity of the battery pack? Oh, I don't know. We're not telling anyone. So it's 35 and a half kilowatt hour gross, which isn't great. It's 33, but by the time you add a uh, destination, which is like $1,200, something like this, it's basically $35,000 before federal and state incentives. So it's quite reasonably priced for an electric car. It's EPA rated range is 100 miles, uh, which is not great for an electric car. And considering it has the 35 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack, it doesn't seem like great efficiency either. Uses a Hitachi front motor that's 87, I think 0.7 kilowatts. You know, when you start measuring motor output in tenths of a kilowatt, things are not gonna be great here, at least my impression. So 87 kilowatt continuous, and then for 10 seconds of a burst, depending on thermals, they say, you can get up to 107 kilowatt output. What's that, like 140 horsepower or something like that? So you know, not straight line acceleration speed. We're not gonna be expecting much. Then throughout the whole presentation, Mazda even admitted, I have to be totally transparent that this is not a good product offering on paper from a Mazda representative. This car does not look good on paper. No, it does not. It's like zero to 60 and forever. And it's pretty expensive and it has no range. So I was like, oh no, this is bad. And I started asking him questions too. And I have to say, I was pretty disappointed with the responses. One of the questions I asked the product team was, are you excited about this car? And for me, product passion goes a long way into making a good end product. Forgive some of the noise. Mazda put them there on purpose, I'm sure. And only one person said yes. Let's take it for a drive. Just a quick break from the main video to let you know about the new out of spec podcast. This is a brand new podcast that we started a few weeks ago. We haven't really told anyone about it, but there's a YouTube channel called out of spec podcast. It'll be linked in the description and in the pinned comment where you can go and listen to some of the out of spec team top cars. And I try and get on there when possible. It's an absolute blast. Great show. And, but if you're interested in cars, you're absolutely going to love it. Let's run through some of the specs on the Mazda MX-30. We have an initial base price of under $34,000 before destination, which is, I think again, about $1,275 or $1,200. Maybe it's $1,175. Seems like a lot. Uh, the car is adapted to be accommodating of a range extended system. So let me pop the hood and kind of show you what that looks like. Now Mazda claims this is a stylish car and you guys know me, I'm not a good judge of style or anything like this. So how do we even pop the hood? There we go. Um, my personal opinion is it looks great from about here forwards. So that's a pretty good looking car, but everything back here is, doesn't do it for me at least. I don't know, doesn't matter. I, if, the style plays zero impact pretty much on what I think about a car. 
The hood has no struts to hold itself up, so I will hold it up manually here. And here's what we have. We have the little Hitachi motor right here. They use Panasonic battery, by the way. Huge electric motor mounts. And I hear some pumps running as well. So this just shows me that obviously this is a combustion chassis altered to be electric. This is a Mazda CX-30 underneath. This open space is where the range extended system would go. However, why not just give it a front trunk on the battery electric versions? Now, forgive the noise. This car is only going to be sold in California at launch. I believe they're targeting 570 cars between now and the end of the year. So for 2021, 570 of these, well, it looks like we won't really have to see too many of them on the road. Again, we're unsure of the usable battery capacity, which to me is like the most insane thing I've ever heard. I've never had an automaker say, we're not gonna tell you how much energy our battery pack holds, yikes. And then we have the charging stuff. They also don't know how fast the level two charger is. We'll see if we can test that today. The DC fast charger, they claim, according to Mazda, if you charge on a 50 kilowatt hour charger, <laughs> This is according to their press material uh, that it takes some amount of time to charge. Again, I'm, I'm laughing there because you don't measure power output in kilowatt hours. It's kilowatts. And even their engineers, their R&D people could not get the difference between kilowatt and kilowatt hours. I'm like, oh my God, how, what's going on here? It's crazy. Taillights look pretty interesting in person. Really like this, this design. That's okay. Trunk space. It has this some amount of space. I don't know how to judge it. I would say, is there enough room for my dogs? Mm, maybe. Put the seats down. Seems reasonable. No issues there. Interior looks awesome, by the way. I have to say, really nice interior. You get this uh, E-Sky Active bag. Can I find a zipper on it? Yes. Here we go. This is a weird implementation to put a charge. Oh my goodness. It's so hard to open with one hand. Here we go. What do we have in here? We have cables, J1772 port, and a power charge that outputs 12 amps. That's pretty good. Hey, that's nice. A lot of cars, even the Volkswagen stuff, only comes with 10 amps. You can see that this is like a weird adapted plug-in thing, but that's cool. Is it adaptable? Can you swap different ends on it? Perhaps it looks like it's definitely like just something they bought off the shelf, which is fine. As long as it delivers 12 amps to the car and does so in different weather conditions, that's cool with me. What else do we need to know? Front wheel drive, of course. It, they claim they have this whole torque vectoring thing. I'll explain that when we get it out on the Kenyans. All the other journalists are gone and they're going on a loop. I just said, can you please just give me the car for the day and I'll bring it back tonight <laughs> with some charge for you to get around. So that's what they agreed to, which is awesome. So we get to do our own testing. We don't have to follow their stuff. Wow, this material is awesome. The color scheme on this car is great. The interior materials look wonderful, truly wonderful. I really love this. Um, and then also you have this, you can't call them suicide doors because that's not appropriate. You have to call them coach doors, but that, I don't know the correct term. Coach doors open without having to open the front doors. Wow, that's a lot of, a lot of meat right there. <laughs> Okay, so we have LED lights in the roof. That's nice, nice sunroof. Okay, weird shifter. We'll talk about that when we drive it. Love the interior. So let me get the front seat set to where I sit, which is gonna be, yeah, right about here. If anything, I'm a little bit too close, I would say. Can I, at six foot one, fit in the rear? Here I go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Our BMW i3 has more room than this. You gotta be kidding me. Headroom though, not bad. Forgive the crazy camera work. They sculpt out the roof here so I can actually fit, which is pretty nice. And I can move the driver's seat forwards. Ha <laughs> ha, but not the passenger seat. What? What on earth? Isn't this where you want to sit as a passenger anyway? What's up with this? Did they just forget to put the switches there? Oh my goodness, we're just seeing this together for the first time. This makes absolutely no sense unless this was supposed to be a right-hand drive car designed for the Japanese market, which this is, and they just didn't change anything for left-hand drive markets. Oh, wow. This is a weird car, folks. And guess what? When I see one on the road, I'm going to be so excited because you have to go so far out of your way to buy one of these things. They don't even know what the lease prices is that you just have to be out of your mind. That just says lock. So that means if you close the trunk now, it'll lock the car. Okay, wow, let's drive it. I really can't wait to drive this car. You join me in the MX-30 where we're gonna go for our first 
drive. Now I just went through and set up the settings and I have to say the infotainment system is great. It's typical Mazda and they even have a setting deep in the info menu that's called high voltage battery monitor. So let me just run you through the stats at start. We have 97% state of charge. By the way, it does let you set a charge limit, uh, AC and DC. So you can go from 10% to 100% in 10% increments and shut off the charging. So if you're driving a friend's Mazda MX-30 and you really want to screw with them, you can set AC and DC charging to 10% and it will never charge past this. To me, that's a little bit crazy. It's not good for the battery either. Most cars have like a 40 to 100% uh, limit and 40% is usually probably about as low as I would go for a daily charge limit in an EV. Just my impression. Uh, high voltage battery monitor system here. It shows 97% SOC driving range, 99 miles indicated. I do not know if that's rated range or guessometer. Maybe we'll find out, maybe we won't. I don't have too much time with the car today. Driving range without climate control, it says I'll add two miles. So if I turn this off, now it says 100 miles indicated, but we're in California, it's warm. Charging schedule's off and estimated AC charge time remaining is 50 M. I assume that means minutes. So the shifter is really weird. To go reverse, I have to click the side button, move it to the right and then drive once I'm in the right position is down two notches. So I'll keep it in reverse, I guess. Great camera in the rear, typical Mazda, 360 degree view on the right, full camera in the back. I can go into drive without clicking the shift uh, unlock. That's nice. Shifter is pretty cool. Once you get used to it, it has auto hold. I can turn that on. Steering wheel needs adjustment good range of adjustment great steering wheel great interior in this car i have to say love the material choices Ooh, the seat goes nice and low that's good okay we're coming around coming around to the mozzie the mazda Rotti. now i have been a mazda owner and fan for a long time i've owned a miata and loved that car and truly had some of the best times and memories in that car and here we're in the MX-30. This is a 35-ish thousand dollar car once you factor in the base one. Like the maxed out one's like 37, 38 grand. At that point, buy an ID4. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just telling you right off the bat, unless you're getting a huge discount at your dealer or leasing one, buy an ID4. We're gonna drive around the city and then we're gonna take it up in the uh, up in the canyons. I have enough time throughout the day. What do you say we try and head towards Angeles Crest Highway? There we go, and direction set. How far away are we? Let's find out. One hour, 12 minutes, 103 kilometers. Oh, my phone's still in kilometers. Which way do I have to go here? Right turn. And let's start with the acceleration. Sally, there's no driving modes, I've been told. I do have paddle shifters, I'll explain what they do, but 20 miles an hour, let's hit it. There's 50, there's 60. That was so weird. I hit the throttle, I got a peak, and then it dipped. What was with that? What was with that? All right, let's try that again. Slowing down. You know what? Coming to a stop. I don't even care. Stopping in the middle of the road. Launching it. You get this horribly terrible noise in the front that sounds like a little hamster running on a wheel. Okay, so peak power I knew was not going to be good. Again, 87 kilowatt uh, constant and then like 107 peak, I think is what it is. And so front wheel drive, Hitachi sourced motor, uh, battery pack, by the way, I don't think I've mentioned it yet. It's a 400 volt class of vehicle, but I think they claim 355 nominal. So very low voltage. And I think this is going to hurt the DC fast charging. Um, and we'll see Model S performance absolutely ripping through there. So great seating position, great steering wheel, great pleasant place to be. Honestly, the interior of this car is where it shines. I, I, I think the front design's not bad either. I love this color combo and trim. The, if I had to spec one of these, I would get it in this exact specification. So um, let's launch it here. Brake torque, go. Feeding in power. All right, you get full power at about 28. There's 50 miles an hour. There's 60 miles an hour, cool. Okay, well that felt slow. <laughs> but you guys know I'm not against slow EVs. I'm not like an EV guy that says you need a Model S performance or Lucid Air to rip around everywhere. No, I drive an electric smart car daily. I put up a, a video actually today while I'm filming this of me driving my dream car, the Renault Twizy. I'm not against slow EVs. I'm just against EVs that don't make sense. 
and and they're not even like fun like the twizzy doesn't make sense but at least it's really hilarious this seems like oh we're actually making a good effort here but then they made a terrible car at least on paper so uh, acceleration is not this car's strong point they even say depending on how quickly you hit the accelerator uh, will alter the curve to get to max power to give it a less EV like driving experience reducing the jolt which means the car feels slow um, all right directions right turn here off we go I it does have carplay I choose not to use it in this trip because I like to play around with the Mazda system so okay <laughs> we can roast the tires just like any other front wheel drive EV traction control uh, was really good there I have to say fantastic calibration of traction control you heard it whoop, whoop, whoop. way better than Hyundai uh, Kona and Kia Niro in terms of managing that front tire spin let's try it again here full power it's still maintaining power sending it to the outside way more controlled than other EVs but this is why I say if you have a ground up EV don't make it front-wheel drive this is based on a combustion chassis so it makes sense that it's front-wheel drive because the CX-30 is a front-wheel drive based car um, let me just make sure I know exactly where I'm going here because I have no clue. Yeah, U-turn and then merging onto the highway there. Cool, well, let's get it out on the highway. Let's try some of the driver assistancy stuff. It should be the same as the normal Han, uh, Hyundai, what am I saying? The normal Mazda MX, or I should say any other Mazda. More tire squeal. Great, great traction control calibration. Truly great traction control. Hmm, zero grip though. <laughs> we'll talk more about that when we drive it. I'm wide open throttle. Basically, if you drive this car, you'll be floored everywhere. I'm still floored, 70 miles an hour. And 80, we've now caught up with the i3. <laughs> ah, why am I so mad? <laughs> All right, I need to think objectively. Let me get on the highway, get some miles under me, and now um, we'll try some driver assistance stuff coming up. You join me on the highway now, and this is before we're really gonna get into my real impressions on the car. Uh, just wait a little bit. When we get in the canyons, I'll take you for a full blast, share everything I think, sort of a mind dump, if you will. But let's try some of the driver assistance. So first of all, the road noise, we're on a really loud surface right now, isn't bad for considering the the car it's a you know subcompact suv cuv type thing hatchback with a lift kit pretty good the wind noise is loud uh by the way the top speed is 90 miles per hour don't ask how i know so i'm gonna set the cruise control to 75 miles per hour there's buttons on the steering wheel here that when the sun is at a certain angle i can't see so i was trying to like answer a phone call and i'm like looking around on the wheel and that was pretty tough I have uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four different uh, distance settings for adaptive cruise control. We have 50, 48% state of charge right now. And um, the car does have active lane centering, but it's not working at the moment. Uh, it does kick on and off whenever it kind of feels like it. Yeah, there's no exact driver assistance. Uh, or I should say lane centering on and off switch. It's in the menu system. Same as normal Mazdas, no different. Amazing steering wheel, great seating position, really comfortable suspension, I have to say. Uh, the problem is just the, the range at highway speeds is not, not so great. So I've driven 46.9 miles and I'm down to 47% state of charge from 99. And I really have not been driving that hard. I've just been kind of on the highway. So, um, because this is just an early first test video, I figured I'd take you along on how I test cars, which is get to my area in Angeles Forest as soon as possible. We're gonna go to the Electrify America station just outside of Angeles Crest Highway, make sure that it actually charges because I, again, I don't know, but uh, as you know, a lot of brand new EVs that are not quite yet on the market do have a hard time working with Electrify America. The CCS standard is a standard, but it allows for some variability and sometimes charging is pretty tough on uh, their units. So I just wanna make sure this does charge on EA. By the way, Mazda has a deal with ChargePoint where you get $500 when you get your MX-30. You can either put this to a level two home wall charger, or I should say, you know, EVSE, just a wall box, or you can use it as charging credit. So 500 bucks to charging, which is pretty neat. There's also another program that if you wanna take your Mazda on a road trip, uh, Mazda already knows this is not meant for road trips. And for 10 days a year, for the first three years of ownership, you can go to a Mazda dealer and put as many miles, they say there's no limit, on one of their cars. 
How the Mazda dealers are just gonna have availability cars set aside for this, I don't know. I remember the BMW i program tried this for i3 years ago when this launched and it was a disaster. And dealers were like, no, sorry, we have to use this for service loaner cars or we're not gonna let you take our brand new X5 out. And it was, it requires dealer participation, which is tough from a manufacturer standpoint because they don't have full control over dealers. So I'm not saying um, that it's sort of dead on arrival. I just would say, Make sure you have a really good partner center where you're getting your MX-30 before you start relying on this promise. Uh, Tycon rolling on the highway just up ahead looking wonderful. Truly wonderful. Let's go charge this thing. <laughs> Let's just hope it charges because I won't be able to make it back if it doesn't. <laughs> There's plenty of other chargers around. I'm not worried about it. And now here we are at an Electrify America station. This is the station I always go to when I review EVs in Los Angeles because this is right near all the good driving roads. So I think I hear the cooling fans going. Do you? Nope, perhaps it was just the charger. Yeah, chargers running cooling, but I don't know why. It says complimentary session. Oh no, when it says that, it means something's broken. This is interesting. You can pull the DC port off before the J plug. All right, let's take a look as to how this is machined wonderfully. That looked good. Went in nice, complimentary session. Thanks EA for the free juice. Now, couple things I'm gonna be curious about to see here. Will we A, get it to work? Will it charge? That's always a question. The second question is, uh, will we get charging speeds shown inside the car in the UI? That's really important. We get cable cooling going on here. Let's hit continue. No receipt. I just wanna see the charging speeds, baby. It's a 150 kilowatt unit, but usually when it's this complimentary, it's like, not maxed out no receipt come on thank you for choosing electrify america you're welcome don't have much of a choice here 21 percent state of charge 33 kilowatt current charging speed it says the car's requesting 34 kilowatts but i don't believe that number ever at least i haven't had good experience trying to get it in the shade 33 kilowatts at 22 percent uh what no way, you can't tell me that's its peak charging speed. Battery's nice and toasty. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the screen inside the car over here. They're doing some sort of construction project, I don't know. Love the interior, really do. This thing's great. Oh, we see some things here, okay. One hour, five minutes to full. I've selected the power button. It says vehicle not switched off. I understand, turn on. There we go. High voltage battery is low. It's really not that low. Information, stop dinging at me. High voltage battery. We get no charging information. It says 16 hours on AC charging. So that must be level one calculation. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it uses a rated range driving instead of a guesso meter based off of my numbers here. I drove 66.4 miles and we were down to, I think 23% state of charge, but at least it plugged in and worked right away. So you get no good charging information inside the car. So that's a bummer, real bummer. And we come over here to the screen and it's still doing 33 kilowatts. <laughs> oh no, I don't have much time with this car. I need it to charge. We gotta go shred up a canyon. All right, well, I'll charge it until it tapers and then we got to keep filming. Okay, folks, we've just hit 81% state of charge. Let's take a look at the stats. <laughs> Been filming another little video while I'm here. So it's doing 20 kilowatts, what? So it's taken 36 minutes to go from 21 to 81% state of charge. We've added 19 kilowatt hours without an Electrify America pass because Mazda doesn't have any partnership with them. It's $8.17 at 43 cents a kilowatt hour. It's not like you get free charging with EA like you do with uh, Volkswagen. You can, however, spend $4 a month with the network and buy that rate down to 32 cents a kilowatt hour, 34 cents a kilowatt hour, something like this. And um, that's pretty good, I guess, sure. <laughs> Holy smokes, 20 kilowatts at 80%. Ah! <laughs> we need to get out of here. Okay, we're gonna edit video, edit, uh, end editing videos, and we're gonna jump on the road. Holy smokes. 
And now we get to the fun bit of this first experience. This is one of my favorite roads, Angeles Crest Highway. And while there are great roads in the area around here, we're gonna stick to the main one, I think. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of fire issues up here. So we just need to be mindful that uh, we're clear of any firefighters. We're not breaking any rules, anything like this. It's a really sensitive area right now. So um, we're gonna go for a drive on one of my favorite roads. We're gonna turn auto hold on. We're gonna put the vehicle in drive. I do wanna mention that there are five different regions level settings if you go all the way up on the plus paddle you get D with two up arrows D with two up arrows just a hint of regen then when you touch the brake pedal which is all brake by wire so it's all algorithm modeled uh, it will blend uh, regen and then blend friction brakes we're gonna play around a lot of that with a lot of that in this video talk a lot about brake pedal calibration things like this then you can go D with one arrow D normal the annoying thing with this car is every time you come out of cruise control or put it in drive or restart the car, it goes to normal D. It doesn't remember what setting you like. Then you can get D minus and D minus minus. D minus minus is pretty much full regen off throttle and then the brake pedal blends just a hint and some more. Now there's other uh, technology here at work with the regen power systems and power control rather than just the motor, but we'll talk about it when we drive. So let's talk weight distribution. This car has uh, is based on the CX-30, which is a combustion vehicle, right? Um, and that has like a 60, 65% front weight balance. Here though, because the battery is in the back, we have a 60% rear bias. So it's kind of like a 911. <laughs> it's gonna feel weird coming in the corners. I'm looking forward to experiencing this. We have the car on, I believe the all season tire offering. You can either get Bridgestones or Hankooks, pretty much same tire specifications from Mazda. There's no way to choose which tire you get. They kind of just come at random on the car. And that was a supplier issue they were saying. Um, I do want to mention I just DC fast charged this car as well, as you know, so the battery temperature is warm. So I'm just going to be gentle on the car a little bit here so we don't overheat anything. I don't know if it will, but I don't want to risk ripping on it now, talking to you guys, and then not being able to experience full performance later on. These are all the considerations when I do EV stuff. There's a lot that goes into this. Um, oh, look at this gorgeous Porsche coming down here. That is so sick. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You just see some of the craziest cars up here. This is why I love it so much um, so we have 107 kilowatt peak output for 10 seconds and then it goes to 87 we also have something called EGVC I think is what they refer to it as essentially what this does is when you turn into a corner it lifts the throttle a little bit or under regen it'll give you a little bit more region to get more vertical load on the front tire so it'll really push the front tires into the ground Mazdas have this technology of course this is just done with an electric motor uh, and it's done at point 0.05 G of deceleration from your target. So that doesn't mean it'll slow down if you're on the throttle. It just kind of pulls back a little bit is my understanding. Honestly, I don't feel it working here, but they say that when you unwind, you'll get a hint of a little bit of acceleration, 0 0.01 G, I believe, and then, or maybe it's 0.1 G, and then also uh, it's gonna grab the outside brake, friction brake uh, to help uh, pivot the car and straighten it out on corner entry and or corner exit excuse me so this is kind of interesting they're doing a little bit of torque vectoring by brake um, to me that just sounds like it's heating up the brakes and honestly I always tap the brakes a little bit before a sharp corner just to get that vertical load on the front tires and then dig it in so for a true driver not sure how necessary that will be also I want to mention there is a traction control off button but no ESP I sat there and held it for 10 seconds doesn't do anything so you can hit it once traction control off we will turn it off I'm sure um, but for now we're just going to drive with it on and get a sense of the car so you guys kind of get an idea of how this car is engineered designed and weight distributed it right it's front motor it's got uh you know big battery in the middle underneath and then of course it's got 60 percent of the weight on the rear tire so i'm already noticing some like just letting this thing lean over on that back tire you can feel it go now the mazda cx30 i've had on uh, a back road before and i had a lot of issues with axle vibration on corner exit it would go like it wasn't really designed that well uh, for hardcore blasting. Now I've had that same exact drivetrain in the Mazda 3 hatch and it was awesome. Truly one of the best cars I've had on a back road all year long. So I'm really hoping this car is good. And first impressions, driving it slowly here, we're stuck behind a Prius with the guy's hand out the window, is this thing's good, but I'm already hearing the tires work. So my impression is the car is under tired, but we'll find out when we really push it. The nice thing about having more of that 
rear weight distribution on a front biased car means uh, I can really sling the car into a corner and use both outside tires grip and because the weight is low I can actually use some of that inside tire grip as well to increase cornering speeds. Mazda says this handles better than the combustion chassis as which it, or to which it's based so I'm looking forward to really turning it up. So now let's see if we can get past this Prius or we'll have to pull over and wait. I guess uh, time will tell. Uh, let's see, other points I wanna talk about. Charging's terrible. It was doing 22 kilowatts at 80%. Uh, that's with the AC on too, which is a load, which it should pull from the charger if it was designed properly, but I don't. I didn't play around and see if it did. Um, brake pedal blending. I guess since we're stuck behind this guy, let's try it. So I'm gonna go into the least amount of regen settings. So D up arrow two times. I would call it D plus plus. And I wanna see how the car feels under braking, so really nice. See, there's some benefits by doing a fully brake-by-wire system. The first is um, when you're loaded up in a corner, for example, and you do get a little bit of hint of ABS kicking in, trying to st stabilize the car. What that does is it pre-fills the braking system, and therefore, if an average user goes to brush the brake pedal, it's really firm because it's already built up all the hydraulic pressure in the braking system, and that can feel unnerving for a lot of people, and that's a downside of a hydraulic braking system. For me, I enjoy it because I'm like, oh, I know exactly what the car is doing, and I'll just stand on it and get more braking power, but it, that can freak some people out uh, in sort of an emergency maneuver situation if you will um, the downside with going with a system like this is ABS feedback is usually hard to control in and what you actually you feel with a brake by wire system sometimes is just the pump feedback through the firewall like physically moving the braking system and you're not actually feeling the ABS pump kick and a lot of people also like to feel ABS pump kick so let's try that full emergency stopping zero ABS feel for, through the brake pedal. I can hear it clicking away. You heard it, tick, 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 tick. But I get no feeling of ABS feedback through the brake pedal. We're doing it on an uphill so I don't get elongated stopping time. So let's try it again. Also, I would say pretty weird ABS calibration. Do you hear the tires? It's not very consistent. It's almost too aggressive. Uh, like I would say that would be a snow, snow or dirt profile for ABS braking. That was weird. Hmm, very interesting. Let's go down into D minus minus. Actually, let's try D normal. Let's try the blending point here, for example. So I'm gonna lift off, get quite a bit of regen instantly. Touching the brake pedal, goes to full regen. And at no point can I feel it blend friction brakes. That felt great, no issues there. I do like a brake by wire system for EVs. Honestly, I really do. Um, I think it might be the way to do it, but you need, Automakers need to figure out how to make ABS feel a little bit better through the pedal. Yeah, you feel no no hint of this. Hmm. But the tires are undertired. I mean, I'm braking, it's just rah, and I'm just like touching the brakes. Like if I was doing that in a Taycan, for example, I understand different cars, but like we'd be like through the windshield braking. Let's try some speed. I'm wide open throttle now, 70 miles an hour, allegedly, coming into some great corners. Balance is really interesting. You really feel that rear bias coming through. It's kind of soft. <laughs> you can feel the car just dancing around. Okay, so this is actually really fun because you can let the rear end rotate. So we got some off throttle, off throttle rotation there. I'm gonna turn traction control off. How do I do that? This one, TCS off. And now let's see this thing motor. So full throttle exit, putting the power down nice. Not that there's much power to put down. You just go wide open throttle everywhere in this car. It's the only way to drive. Coming in under braking. Look, you can feel the back end just wants to come and overtake the front. Personally, I like that. That's fun. That's like get the weight on the front, 911 style, get the back end out, and then full power on corner exit and pull itself straight. That's actually really a good time. Uh, suspension's very well tuned, I have to say, for being fairly compliant on the road. Uh, you know, it's wobbly, right? You can see this thing just like, whoa, and it takes a long time for that back end to move over. Strictly enforced fire ban. Good thing we're not, hopefully not causing any fires. That would suck, um, especially with an EV, but very low risk of this, of course. But a lot of, I, we should talk about this too. Public perception of EVs is like, oh my God, it's gonna catch on fire. The Chevy Bolt's not doing that any favors, but like, it's really rare for an EV to, catch on fire or have a thermal event as you should refer to it as. I have to say they're relatively robust. Um, battery pack here is sourced by Panasonic by the way. I don't, it's a, it's a pouch cell situation. I don't know the exact layout, but to me it didn't seem super efficient by the way that they ran the high voltage lines through the center of the battery packs modules. Here we go, big power down the straight. 
don't like this fake noise that they have up front. It sounds really weird and it doesn't increase in noise with, it just increases in pitch. It doesn't feel that good to me. So let's start rocking this thing, shall we? Steering is wonderful. Steering wheel is wonderful. It's, it's pretty fun on a back road. I can feel a little bit of that torque vectoring there actually working so I can feel it grab the brakes. I'm just sitting at wide open throttle to the floor. Come on, 75 miles an hour, still floored. <laughs> some of the numbers you hit on this road are truly staggering in some of the, the fast cars. But, you know, Mazdas have never been about straight line acceleration. It's always been about fun in the corners. And I, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed with the level of rotation I can get, which rotation equals smiles in my world. Just get taking it a little bit easy. Got to build myself up to the tires. I know it's under tired but it's actually holding on better than I thought. I've been flat, full throttle through that whole corner. <laughs> the noise, I don't know if this is, the camera's really picking up the noise, but it sounds so weird. <laughs> the motor itself is really quiet, permanent magnet motor, I should have mentioned, um, which is good for off the line acceleration. Also, the way that they blend in throttle, I think I said at the beginning of the video, if you smack down the accelerator pedal, you get a nice big, uh, curve right up to full power, but if you roll into it, it takes a little while. So battery pack temp seems to be holding steady uh, north, just below the red, I should say. Just below the red, it's holding steady. Regen still working great. One of the benefits of a front wheel drive EV is you can do a ton of regen on the front motor because you, again, have all that weight sitting down on it. And I guess we'll just pause here. We'll wait till we get to a really good section, open it up for a, a truly enthusiast blast and then we'll call it a review of the MX-30, a first drive taste. We've knifed our way through some of that traffic and now we're going flat out, which isn't really that fast in practical terms. So, wide open throttle. We have some cars stopped up here, some enthusiasts out for a drive. I love California, you get all the car enthusiasts out here, that's great. And we're just gonna lean this thing over. Man, quite a bit of lean, but good control good control mid corner like it it's not busy at all this car's tuned well from a drivability standpoint dab of brakes on the way in yeah it's fun you just give it a little bit extra steering input induce some rear movement and because it's front wheel drive you just go wide open throttle pulls itself straight <laughs> look at this just sitting here with tire squeal right on the edge <laughs> wide open throttle it's so easy to drive fast genuinely because if you just lift off, the front end tucks in a little bit. There's a lot of weight underneath that's really helping you. And you just kind of play around with the throttle and regen to kind of pitch and nose the car where you want the weight to go. So if you want a little bit more stability, wide open throttle straightens out, weight transfers to the rear wheels. If you want more grip on the cornering, uh, which is needed in this car because it's a little bit under tired, you just lift off on the pedal a little bit and just put some weight down. And here we are, wide open throttle. It's slow, no question. Straight line acceleration, you're pretty much, like I said, wide open throttle everywhere. But I do like the braking uh, situation on this car. I think it feels nice. The pedal's pretty firm. Gives, honestly, no, no feedback, but I can feel it, obviously, in the car slowing down. And I think it's tuned wonderfully. A wonderfully tuned brake-by-wire system. Some journalists were saying they didn't like it that I was talking to, but I totally disagree. I think it's done well. And I've driven some really poor blended brake systems before. Coming in through some of the tighter sections now. Let's see how it does. Standing on the accelerator pedal. I mean, you can definitely cover some ground, but man, I should monitor our charging because I started at the bottom of the hill with 80, roughly 80% 80 state of charge. I'm down to 38%. Holy smokes. And if you do quick maneuvers, yep, ESP is still on, but this is a lot of rollover protection as well. You don't want the body oscillating. High voltage battery is low, 37% state of charge. Oh my God, so it drives nice, but you can't go anywhere in it. <laughs> I hope I can make it back to the charger, but I do kind of want to like drive it on these roads a little bit. Let's stuff it in. Yeah, so off throttle, look at this. You can just dance it right on the edge. really just trying to be overly aggressive to see stability control calibration it's grabs brakes nicely really slows down body motions like uh, what a lot of users will do is if they get the car sideways they kind of saw away at the wheel and it's doing a really good job of 
managing that. So I have to say, Mazda spent their time on track with this car, no question. It's calibrated wonderfully. So all the good Mazda stuff from a front wheel drive driving perspective is awesome. No issues here with this car out on a back road other than can I have a DC charger at every mile marker, please? <laughs> it's really fun just stuffing it into a corner, letting the back come and then powering out. I mean, you drive it a little bit weird, Look at that, it's just, you just settle the back end around. I hope you guys can get a little bit of this impression. Let's flip around here. Look at that, no grip. <laughs> There's zero grip. Full power. A little bit of torque steer there, but not much. Look, that's full power, but I can't imagine we're getting 100 kilowatts anymore. I think we're probably down to that 87 kilowatt limit. It is amazing how undertired this car is, but this will help with range, <laughs> but not enough. Well, I don't know. Do you guys just want to join me for ripping around? I feel like uh, we're driving a little bit silly here, of course. Over the bumps, how does it do? They claim they've been able to put a stiffer tire on this car than CX-3. I do totally feel that 100%. You stuff it in, this tire is going just fine. Great steering wheel, great braking, really good braking, really good braking. If people want to know how to do a blended system, now I haven't driven the car hard enough to really get the brakes that hot because there's not much to slow down. So that's where it can get interesting if you get the discs hot. And that really only happens with a higher powered vehicle. But I guess I gotta go right back to the charging station because I've only had fun for about 20 minutes and it's out of juice. But I'm still sitting at wide open throttle because American freedom folks it's I just love stuffing it into corners like this it must look so silly on video because you're like wow this dude's just flinging the wheel around but it really is hilarious when you can just get this back end to work because front end it's not much help in this car you really got to use that rear tire like watch this look out of the corner rear end out and then power down and it just kind of slides oh it's really fun actually really fun on a back road <laughs> UPS was shredding. Cool. Well, I think let's finish up the video here then. The Mazda MX-30 is truly abysmal on paper in terms of specifications. In terms of a proposition to buy this car, I would say 0.0, .0 recommend in terms of value for money. Leasing this car might be interesting. If this thing's over $100 a month to lease, I wouldn't do it. But I suspect they're going to have a pretty attractive lease on this car. They haven't released any numbers. That's where maybe if it's like $59 a month, sure, why not? Just an extra car to fool around it. But like, don't buy this as like your main car. It just won't work for you. You need a secondary vehicle for trips. And I really wouldn't rely on that Mazda 10 day a year thing. I think that's going to be a disaster, but I don't know. But I've just never seen that type of solution work that well. And I gotta say, I'm pretty disappointed in Mazda for having, I would say, my impression, very little passion for this product, very little product knowledge, very little uh, understanding of the use case of an EV in America. Um, but I gotta say, also, on the same hand, they understand where their cars need to shine, and that's out here on a back road. And you guys know I haven't been nice to this car in this review or others, and I don't think I really ever will be. But I definitely will be snapping pictures when I see them on the road because it'll be so interesting when someone actually buys one. <laughs> It'll be like, oh my God, they sold one. It all just comes down to the lease special. So I leave you with that. If it's gonna be a cheap lease, then sure. But don't expect to just drive this car as your main vehicle because it can't, has no range and very slow charging. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.